Hey guys, welcome back to Ari the Stag. TR Tony here, sat in the garage. Um, Saturday afternoon, just so I come and do a few bits uh, in the garage, tinkering around. Uh, one thing I've got to do uh, this afternoon is just turn uh, this little baby over. Uh, we've had it a few months, as you know, since uh, we had it fixed and had, uh, up and running, which is good. So just got to turn it over, make sure we keep the uh, oil and everything lubricated inside. So I'll be doing that in just a second. Um, and then separately, this afternoon, I plan to um, get stuck into one of the front seats. Uh, I started to have a look at it last weekend and um, already it's causing a few problems. It's not coming with me very lightly at all. Um, I've looked on uh, Facebook and uh, eBay rather for uh, spares and it appears that they're, they're fairly rare so I'm pretty much stuck with it but let me just talk you through what I've been doing with it and uh, let's see if we can go on this journey together. Um, the idea is to rebuild it obviously in time whether I actually do the the final um, kind of upholstery or put that out to a professional I don't know yet but certainly the old seats do need uh, rectifying first and stripping down so at least I can save some money by doing that. All right, so I've got my uh, ratchet out. I've put it uh, on the crankshaft bolt and tightened it up. So it's just literally a question of turning it over a few times just to make sure we're getting the oil around the system and the belts, chains moving and stuff. Um, this was advice we had when we had the engine rebuilt and it's now running, as you know. So it's literally just to keep it in reasonable metal until eventually we'll put it back into the car. So uh, all good. Okay, so here are the uh, front seats, our UNY 49M front seats. As you can see, they're pretty tired. The uh, um, covering is all split. Uh, I don't think the foam's too clever either, especially when I get it out in a minute and, and show you. But um, yeah, you know, it's, it's together at least, so life could be worse. But uh, as for the uh, headrest, there's not a lot of resting going on in there, but uh, I like a challenge. <laughs> Now, many of you will be familiar with the layout of the uh, seating arrangements, the front seats in the Stag. Uh, uh, here you have a kind of rubber diaphragm, they call it. I think they're about 40 quid each to buy. Clearly, this one has had a, a better life before. Um, and I'll show you something interesting on the other seat. I think this is a driver's seat, this one. But in here, you actually got a, a sensor, which I'll show you on the other seat in just a moment. But that's all there. Um, what I'm trying to do, you can see these runners are pretty manky. Uh, what I'm trying to do is take the mechanism off and smarten it all up. Uh, here's the lever for the uh, adjustable uh, rake of the seat. Uh, you can see that then lo locates into these runners, if only I could move them. I did WD-40 them, but that, that piece there here lo locates into any one of these uh, slots in the runners. And uh, of course, you've then got height adjuster. So, you know, for, considering this was a car made in 1973 um, and uh, a 70s car, they, they thought a lot about um, uh, comfort. This cam obviously moves one way on the other and therefore raises and lowers the seat which as many of you all no doubt know those have got cars already uh, this handle winding the handle on here uh, adjusts the thread uh, here which then adjusts uh, through this retained bolt I suppose you'd call it and that then drives the whole thing backwards and either raises or lowers the seat so it's quite a clever little bit of um, engineering um, you can see here the frame is quite rusty um, I'm hoping it'll um, clean up okay once I get it all to bits but um, I'll just sort of show you the the mechanism so you can uh, familiarize yourself with what we've got in front of us um, this one as I say has had better days uh, but uh, hopefully we can uh, make it good this is the uh, release mechanism uh, for the uh, seat back I believe but um, I'll have another look and see where that sits later but uh, objective this afternoon is to get these off it isn't easy because some of these bolts are pretty badly um, corroded in and I suspect I'm gonna have to drill a few out so just quickly off camera I've swapped the uh, the chairs over and uh, this one you can see is marginally better than the other the diaphragm um, and I think this must be the passenger seat I'll tell you for why in just a moment um, these runners are a little bit better I did WD-40 them all before I put this all away back in the day but I think you can see there how the, uh, the mechanism actually works and uh, with a little bit of a better spring on there you can see how that locks it off it's kind of quite nice to move it backwards and forwards um, I mentioned 
just now the uh, sensor. Now under here uh, are uh, a pressure sensor which um, shows you when someone's sitting in it obviously and they haven't got their seatbelt on there's obviously a light that comes on. So I mean this was pretty advanced wasn't it for back in 1973. Uh, there isn't one on the driver's side I don't think unless someone wants to correct me. Um, having looked online it would appear there is only the one and it's just for your passenger when they're sitting in the passenger seat to know that whether or not they've got their belt on it will um, flag up a bit of a warning. Now what I managed to do last weekend was actually unbolt these main uh, locating pins uh, here you can see it's uh, joined onto the seat and at the front here uh, if you can see down the depths in there there's another little hole there and that locates to that so the front two here and this side came off really well these however if you can see over here have uh, somewhat a different uh, story so i started to wind them out and uh, whilst the bolt should look like that when it's uh, complete the two at the back i thought i'd done a reasonable job both ended up snapped off so that wasn't a particularly good thing to have happen not only have i got to get another bolt which i think i can get i've seen those on um, ebay uh, earlier yesterday when i was looking um, but the big issue now of course is that i've now got in there uh, you can just about see it a bolt stuck you can just see i'm gonna have to drill these out or chisel them off or do something to release them uh, worse than that uh, at the front here you've got the uh, mechanism I just showed you where you can wind the seat back with this handle that I've now taken off uh, on this side uh, which is great but if you look here um, you've got some retained nuts uh, actually in the depths of this uh, uh, behind the front of the seat and on the other side behind I have to flip the camera right around so bear with me just over here um, is uh, the uh, uh, top of the bolt but you'll see it's a slotted one not um, not a bolt as such or, an, or a nut or a bolt head it's a slotted screw so I'm going to struggle with that I think trying to get that out but I'll see what I can do uh, with a bit of um, luck and good fortune fingers crossed I uh, put some WD-40 on it end of last week so let's hope that's got into it and we can release these uh, runners before we start taking the rest of the seat apart now, rightly or wrongly, all I've decided to do actually is probably sensible. Uh, I should have done this in the first place, but the bolt here uh, holds the uh, back on to the seat squab. So uh, when you release the uh, the lever on the side of the car uh, uh, seat here, that then releases the back to flip over to let your rear passengers get in. So what I'm going to do is uh, try and get these uh, bolts out, release the back, so at least I can get to the seat squab a bit better than I currently am. And uh, all manner of problems now, I'm afraid. I've just undone that one and uh, thought it came off to blinking easily. This whole car is suffering from bolt rot. Look at that, they've just snapped that off. So something else to worry about now, something else to drill. Not good. So I guess I should be grateful for small mercies, but this side appears to be coming out okay. Um, it's uh, squeaking a bit when I did it, but this one does appear to be coming free. So at least that's, uh, that's good news. <laughs> and there we are. I've managed to separate the two. So we've now got the seat squab separate to the seat back and the uh, uh, plastic knob on the side here does release this mechanism here, which does work still, hurrah, at least something works. Um, and now with both of those bolts out, even though one's broken, I'm gonna to have to drill that one out, we now have released the base. So hopefully I can get to it better than before. Having now got the uh, seat squab off the back, I've turned it on its side. I'm gonna try and see if I can drill into this um, hole here and try and release what was the uh, the bolt that's now stuck in there. All right, so I've got it down on the floor now because it was a bit easier to get to. And basically what I'm trying to do, as you may have seen the guy who came to fix our engine uh, bolt stuck problem, start out with a, a little uh, center punch here, create a start in, in, the, uh, in the material there, and then grab a, a smallish drill um, and try and see if we can just work through here. So that's what I've been doing. 
um, and just very, very slowly, you can see the screws beginning to come out a little bit at a time. So I guess we've just got to be patient and continue to drill through here. Being careful not to burn out, of course. And as you can see here, slow but steady progress. We're getting quite a bit of swarf out now, so that's positive. And there you can see, yeah, definitely uh, making some inroads. The idea of this is to try and get it centred, but it's really difficult. We'll see how we get on, we'll carry on. We've had some success, so we've actually got through there, as you can see, but we're actually drilled all the way through the, uh, the bolt. Um, I'm now going to go through with a slightly bigger drill bit, see if I can uh, get some more out. And with that bigger drill bit, you can just about see down there, I've managed to break off the back of the the bolt. And if you can just see in there, I might just put a bit of light on here so you can, oh no, I think you can see it. So that's actually the old bolt that's just come out. So I think we're through and uh, we might need to re-tap the uh, retained nut that's uh, welded on there, but hopefully at least we're clear. So that's good news. I've got the uh, seat back up on the bench now and um, as I said before at the front end of the film just trying to see how to release these slotted bolt screws. They've got a retained nut uh, behind as you can just see here if I just show you. Um, so these are actually re um, retained nuts on the back plate of the actual seat structure itself. So as you can see those bolts come through here and they've been in there forever and uh, I have already tried an impact screwdriver. These were wd 40 last week. Um, I could try heat, but then I'm worried about burning everything else around it. Not that I'm going to be preserving the uh, seat foam, but clearly we need to get these out because this cannot come out now unless, uh, the runners cannot come out unless I release this. And uh, as I say, I think these spares are rare as hen's teeth. So I want to try and retain this if I can, even if I have to destroy these, if I can keep the back plate, uh, tap new holes and whatever, at least I'll be able to uh, resuscitate it. That's, that's the plan anyway, but uh, wish me luck. <laughs> it's not good fun this at all. So I've tried several uh, options, including the uh, heavy duty uh, uh, impact driver. It's not budged a thing, so I've decided rather than drill it for now, if I can release the heads, by hacksawing off the tops and maybe having to have a go with an angle grinder or whatever maybe I can preserve it that way so that's what I'm doing okay time to get the big guns out let's see what uh, this can do for it Okay, well I've already gone and done it now, haven't I? So <laughs> that's now pretty reassuring, he says. You can just about make out the um, diameter of the uh, the bolt thread there, if we can just zoom in on it properly. So at least I've got something to punch into now, maybe drill out both sides. So uh, that's been a bit of angle grinding. Uh, only time will tell if that was the right decision or not. We shall see. Okay, so half the plans come together. Um, I was just tapping the centre dot. You can just see what you try and do is get a centre point in the middle of the uh, remainder of the material of the bolt so you can start your metal drill off. This one, I was just hitting it um, to get that centre point. And I think you can see there, it's actually just come loose. It's waggling about in the hole. I went over the top there, over here, and you can see that's actually free. So that's good news. Just got to do the other side now. <laughs> And uh, persistence pays off, doesn't it? In the end, uh, we've managed to release this look, which is great. Uh, I had to drill this one. It wouldn't release from the outer. Looks like there's a bit of a washer there. I need to look after that. Let's put that away safely over there. But uh, obviously I'll have to drill these out still further and obviously drill this one out, which I haven't done because it just came off. But the main issue is that we've now released this bit of the mechanism, which as I say, I think are as rare as hen's teeth. So I'm quite a happy bunny now, good news.
and I suppose this might help somebody else in the future. How you get it out is by unscrewing that uh, adjuster all the way out, so eventually it'll release from that uh, block inside the crud in it from the various sparks that were flying everywhere earlier. But uh, I'll obviously have to clean all that up later on. But that's how you get it out. Fingers crossed. And so we have the little monkey removed from the mechanism. I'll just screw this back in here in a minute just to uh, make sure I don't lose it. Clearly the runners need a bit of tidying. I think they're quite serviceable actually. It's only surface rust. So I'll obviously clean them all up and make them look nice. Uh, might be another spring or maybe just oil that up would be good. But I think they are perfectly salvageable and I'm very pleased about that. And here I'm just uh, drilling into the other one to see if I can drill out the centre. Very, very carefully. I think you can see the straw coming out of there. Important to find that at the position in line with the bolt. You don't want to go off to one side and uh, mess up the thread, although probably we'll have to um, recut the thread anyway. But uh, that's how we do it. And I'll go through it with a bigger drill after this. So there we are. There we are. We've um, managed to drill through to the other side on both of those. That is obviously the thread still left in. I'll try a slightly bigger drill bit to see if I can get more material out. Hopefully they'll start collapsing and maybe preserve the thread inside. We'll see. Right, well I've got, um, I've drilled out as much as I possibly can. I think when I get the whole frame clear of the uh, material, uh, the uh, foam and the covers, I'll be able to clean this up a lot better and probably re-tap. Um, at the back here, I've managed to uh, uh, just knock out the uh, two screws that were sitting just here in the retained nuts. So if I just drag you right down and have a look, there we are. So there we are, you can see that's now clear. And as is, uh, where are we? There, this one over here as well. So that's, um, that's really good. And uh, fingers crossed it's uh, on the road to being salvaged. Happy days. And so now it's just a question of getting off the uh, the foam and this um, vinyl leatherette look. Um, 1970s, well, I think it was done in the 1980s actually this, but it's well past its sell by date and we'll have to get new covers obviously. These clips hold the material to the frame and I'm just now taking those out so that we can release the cover and what lurks beneath, which looks a bit knackered. And now just working on this membrane, um, the diaphragm they're called, this clearly has seen a lot better days and uh, US, but just I'll show you how they held on. You've got little metal clips into the sides here where it was all held on originally. These are obviously all perished and uh, they're US, but uh, just gives you an idea of how the thing is uh, retained uh, underneath the seat. Here's the uh, pressure sensor that I've just removed from the diaphragm. And when you sit on that, oh, actually you can feel it. There's a bit of a spring in there. I wondered how they worked. Um, yeah, so obviously when you sit down, you can see it just makes a contact and then switches off your alarm, uh, your belt um, light if they've got the belt in. So it's um, obviously completes or breaks the circuit, not quite sure which. No doubt people will tell me, but uh, that's how it works. So um, only on the passenger side this, on the basis that um, if it's the driver's side, then you're driving it. So you don't really need to know about that. But if the passenger's not got the belt on, then that's when the warning sign will uh, be triggered by uh, this being sat on. And obviously then the seat belt making a circuit that then turns the light off. I reckon that's how it works. Now, something I've seen online on how you repair these uh, seat squabs is that uh, if you can see here, you've actually got straps that hold the, um, the crease down. So if I just go underneath here, that crease there, okay, where your, that's the, the very back, that's the front of the seat looking at this. And this line here is held in. So it gives it the definition, but it's held in by these straps that go through the frame. And then on the other side, on the underside, they're actually, um, I think they're clipped on actually by the looks of it. So they come through the foam and they're clipped on. There you go, you can see that clips there. So that pulls in tight and that gives it that definition, just so you know. So when we put it back, we'll have to fiddle with that, I think, to uh, make sure it's the right tension. 
and that uh, it all looks right on the other side. <laughs> and uh, this seed is fighting its way all the way to the end. Um, some of you may already know, but the underside is held on by these two screws here, which, um, yeah, they look nice and easy to get out, don't they? I might have to get involved in some more drilling. I'll uh, see how I get on, but uh, impact driver at the ready. Let's see if we can release those naughty little screws. So guess what? Impact driver doesn't work and uh, probably going to have to pull them out, I think, somehow drill them out, maybe. I'll have another look at that. Uh, and actually just the covering has now come away. So uh, final reveal, it is all covered in all sorts of detritus, this thing. I'm going to have to chuck it in the bin or down the tip or something. So there we have it. The seat is now off the car and on the floor. Doesn't it look lovely? Not. And uh, back here at the uh, frame, that's actually not a lot of frame after all that, is it? I'm quite surprised how little um, metal there is. Uh, very surprising. Um, yes, it's got lots of rust. Um, I'm hoping though, actually that's material, it's not rust there, so that's, that's not too bad. I reckon with a good old wire brush and dettol, as I used to say in the olden days, um, that that actually, despite appearances, should be repairable, he says, confidently. We'll have to do some powder coating or painting and Lots of rubbing down, obviously, but um, that, uh, for me, looks okay. Apart from a few things we've got to drill out, obviously. And uh, this might just help others trying to refit the diaphragm. You'll see the um, fixture is actually a bit of a hook there. Uh, so you've got um, the bit that holds the diaphragm there, obviously, and then a long piece there, and that then goes in the hole, kind of depth first, if you know what I mean. So it goes in there, hooks under, and that's when you've then got it locked in. So it's a odd shaped um, hook, but uh, good design and obviously it's lasted a few years, so not bad. And these diaphragm clips are, are rather fiddly. You can see the one that's left in there. I've just taken this one out here. That long piece, if you look at the profile of it, put there so you can see it, um, you can see it's accentuated. So this end goes into the diaphragm. This end actually goes into the pipe or the uh, frame of the seat itself. So when you put it in, um, it actually goes into that hole that way you can see uh, and then that then works so they're quite a fiddle to get out they won't come out easily you have to kind of prise them out and i use a screwdriver just to rotate that out of the frame so if that does help anybody else out there trying to do this job uh, in reverse which we'll have to in the end then that's going to be a good thing in fact, let's just come out by hand so just to show you the process okay well i think i've probably got as far as i can do today um still some more drilling to do uh, two of the um, side ones need sorting, but uh, overall I think it is just about salvageable. One or two rusty bits that may be a bit more serious than others, but generally speaking I think we can probably uh, resuscitate, as I said, and uh, use this again. Uh, I, as I say again, I'm just surprised just how little metal there is in this seat scroll. There's nothing much to it at all really, is there, when you look at it. There you go. All right, so uh, I think this is going to have to be consigned to the bin. Definitely a bit mucky and horrible, uh, but at least we've got two frames there saved, uh, the uh, runner and the actual seat squab itself. So uh, reasonably happy about that. All right, guys, so uh, thanks for watching this afternoon. Um, not an easy job this at all, but hopefully we'll save a few quid uh, having to get someone else to do it. Um, as I say, I don't know whether I'll actually do the upholstery or uh, ask a professional to have a go. Um, lots more still work to do with this. We've got to clear it all off of the uh, bird old screws and bolts that are still stuck in there. But um, I feel we've made some progress this afternoon. And hopefully that's helped one or two of you out there who may be doing the job uh, yourselves. Okay, so that's about it, guys. Um, hope you're having a great uh, weekend, wherever you are. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Harry the Stag. It's a privilege to have you all on board. And we'll see you on Harry the Stag very soon. Cheers for now, guys. All the best.